Welcome to Protecting the Nature of Maine. The Natural Resources Council of Maine produced this film in 2009 to celebrate our 50th anniversary. Every day, NRCM works to protect Maine's clean waters, clean air, vast forests, and wonderful wildlife. Our work now is as important as ever. I'll fill you in on some of NRCM's more recent accomplishments at the end of the film. Thank you for watching and for caring about Maine. The following program has been made possible by the members of the Natural Resources Council of Maine, www.nrcm.org. Think of ways to live lighter on the planet, and then suddenly you are living more lightly on the planet. The real ace up our sleeve here in Maine is we have gobs and gobs of natural wonders, natural land, beautiful landscapes. Rivers, as many people, have often said are the lifeblood of Maine and protection of them and restoration of our great rivers are really the principal reason that the Natural Resources Council of Maine was brought into being 50 years ago. Take 1960 as a baseline. Rachel Carson had written Silent Spring. The roadsides were, were disgustingly covered with, with litter. Toxics in the environment were, were beginning to come to the fores as an issue. You know, we, we developed um, boils on our skin. And we, we put two and two together and said, it's the river. We need to stay out of the river. I mean, I was up river every day fishing. That was our playground. Yeah, there was, I, I remember one day walking along the riverbank and hearing water running. I was like, what is that? And I looked and, and it was actually raw sewage dumping into the river. Turtles, fish, eagles were riddled with pollutants that come from the paper industry. Paint would peel off the houses from the fumes that came from the river. I didn't like to go fishing uh, in the Kennebec River, even after the log drives were over it. It was just a different world, and, and an awful lot of people would kind of shrug their shoulders and say, well, that's the price you pay for progress. Uh, NRCM and, and the people that uh, formed NRCM just couldn't accept that. We've been fighting ever since. Good morning, I'm Brownie Carson. I would like to welcome you all for this wonderful tradition, our member lobby day. These days and the contacts that you make with your legislator really, really matter. As many, perhaps all of you know, we were founded 50 years ago this year by a group of renegade environmental activists who came from all parts of the state and many, many walks of life who saw that there was no real citizen voice active in Augusta. Alongside spearheading passage of the Federal Clean Water Act, Senator Edmund Muskie joined forces with us at the Natural Resources Council to protect the Allagash as a wilderness river. Back in the early 1960s, there was this proposal by the Army Corps of Engineers to build a huge dam at uh, a site called Rankin Rapids on the St. John River, which would have flooded not only the upper St. John River, but also the entire Allagash River, all the way up to uh, Churchill Dam. It was a huge project and a huge menace. We have often fought to keep dams from being built 
that would have destroyed fabulous stretches of Maine's best rivers. NRCM worked very long and hard to stop the Dickey Lincoln Dam on the Upper St. John, which was a favorite of, of Senator Muskie. As the consequences of inadequate hydro backup uh, to other sources of uh, electrical energy become clearer, uh, that will increase our support for the project in the New England congressional delegations. He said that he thought there had been a bargain that, that uh, you guys can have the Allagash, I'll have the, uh, I'll have the Dickey Lincoln Dam. We said there was never any bargain. My first involvement with the Natural Resources Council of Maine was with the Big A Dam on the west branch of the Penobscot. Uh, we were guiding that river for years when we discovered that Great Northern Paper Company wanted to build a dam on it. It would have flooded uh, what remained of the Ripogenus Gorge below the Ripogenus Dam, uh, the best of the white water on the west branch of the Penobscot, and perhaps most importantly, would have uh, exterminated a phenomenal stretch of river that was home to a self-sustaining population of landlocked salmon. And they thought if they built a, uh, a dam at what is called the Big A site, Ambijack, Big Ambijack, Makamas Falls, that would solve their energy uh, problems for all time. And we, as 20-year-old raft guides, or how are we going to stop the largest employer in the state of Maine from building this dam if they want to? And fortunately, in stepped the Natural Resources Council of Maine to help us organize, to help us fundraise, to give us direction. The unprecedented step of removing the Edwards Dam, 19. 88 through 1998, it was a decade-long campaign to reopen the Kennebec River to salmon and sturgeon and shad and herring and 11 species of uh, sea run fish. You're going to look back years hence and say, it all began right here on this river bank today. Congratulations. So this is just mountains of negotiations with the owners of the dam and part of the deal was that they were able to develop additional hydro resources other places in exchange for giving up the power potential of the Edwards Dam. And I think that's an example of a balancing of values. Today we're here to announce a big step forward. The Penobscot Trust has had an option to purchase the Penobscot Dams, VZ, Great Works, and the Howland Dam. And uh, we're here to announce that we have uh, formally notified PPL Corporation that the Trust will in fact uh, move forward to purchase those dams and implement the project. The Penobscot River Restoration Trust uh, was created as a project of NRCM together with the Penobscot Indian Nation and the Atlantic Salmon Federation. The Penobscot is widely viewed um, as providing the last best chance to save Atlantic salmon from extinction. And it is the only sizable run of uh, wild salmon left in the United States. And I really think once these dams go out and we're able to paddle from here down, um, I think the opportunities for guides, rental companies, liveries, outfitters is going to increase. I really believe that. What's so remarkable about the Penobscot project is that we'll have a healthier river and essentially no net loss of clean, renewable energy. The transformation of the rivers in Maine really is remarkable. Through the work of really the people of the state of Maine with the help of the Natural Resources Council, the rivers are usable and, and many of the rivers are you know, really an economic magnet for communities. Maine would be a lot different without NRCM being the voice for the natural world. The earth is our mother. The rivers are her veins. Each time you walk barefoot on the ground, each time you feel the wind in your face, you're on the river, you're on the ocean, uh, it's a reminder that nature, the earth, gives you life. Telejournal News with Gordon Manuel.
If you drive into Washington County these days and want to find the feelings of local residents about those proposed oil refineries for Machias Bay, you need only ask. We need industry in Washington County. If spillage occurs, it will obliterate the fishing industry in this area. The oil industry, which is now bringing in the best lobbyists that money can buy, succeeds in defeating what I think is intelligent, uh, soundly thought out legislation then uh, I would vote for a moratorium, and I think that uh, uh, many members of my party uh, would join. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> okay, good morning. You have to be awake. That's the first, first rule of lobbying. You have to be awake. We will help you over there find your legislator, but do not leave the building today until your representative and your senator know that you have been there. They are very busy, but you know, they're never too busy to talk to their constituents, ever. So you are the most important thing to them because you pull that lever every two years. And so really, you are the most important thing. I hope that everyone here already knows what the Land for Maine's Future program is. It's the state program that provides uh, funds to buy beautiful places in the state of Maine and protect them forever for future generations. All of these protected lands are the infrastructure for our tourism industry. So in that regard, it really is an investment in our long-term economic health. So as you're going out the door, grab a sticker, um, put it on. What it does is even legislators you don't talk to say, oh, they know what, you know, I support LMF. So it's a way to spread your message to people that you don't talk to while you're over there. We have always been on the leading edge of advocacy in the legislature to try to get funds so that we could buy areas in the Northwoods buy parks in populated areas, protect shorefront on ponds and lakes, and even on the coast. I'm proud of having been governor, but I'm really proud of having been involved at the beginning of the Land for Maine's Future program because I think it's the one thing we can do that's permanent. Beach Hill is a very special spot for, well, I think, a lot of people in our community and has a long tradition of, of public use. I think most important is that they're forming a, a deep and wordless bond with place and a heart, heart connection to the land that will, I hope, guide their lives in the future. Thanks to the land conservation community and land for Maine's future program. It's going to be a part of our heritage for these guys and for many more generations to come. We've reached a, a time in history when the perspective needs to be visionary. We've lost the, the land base to go save a pristine place. I think the future requires a much longer term view. And one element of that is you might purchase a scorched earth clear cut, um, knowing that some future generation might be glad you did if, if you let it recover for 50 or 100 years. Get it now and keep it long enough so it returns to health. I find Maine to be not only physically beautiful, but I mean the very fact that we don't have billboards in our state says a lot about what we value. Marion Fuller Brown, bless her soul, was the forceful advocate in the Maine legislature for uh, the regulation of uh, billboards. When I was governor, the phone would ring. Angus, this is Marion. They're trying to do something bad to our law. The natural environment and all are, are so important to the Maine people that Republicans and Democrats get together to save these things. Another victory for NRCM came in 1976 with the passage of Maine's landmark bottle bill. The state of Maine would not look today the way it looks today. It would be a very, very different place.
Nature tourism in Maine really is uh, securing our future. Places like Canada seem keenly aware of this ecotourism, adventure tourism market and they're marketing the beauty and the pristineness of their provinces to that market. They're onto it. We're missing something. We're absolutely missing out if we're not tapping into that because it is big. So the rivers can be economic engines for a community. Places like this are rare and rare places are valuable. One of the reasons NRCM has been successful is that we don't believe in just locking up places, wild places, for the animals. We believe in a, a balanced approach that people need to live here, need to be able to make a living here, but they can do it within a quality place, a wild Maine. Maine's principal characteristic is a sensational and wonderful and deeply moving natural environment. It's our economic ace in the hole. It's what we have to compete. Oh my goodness, I think the natural environment is absolutely 100% key to our business. It is the reason that people come here. Look at Moosehead Lake. Look at the mountains. Look at Kineo, uh, Moose Mountain, Lily Bay Mountain, Prong Mountain. Uh, there's really no place like it left in the world. There have been many large threats to the North Woods. The greatest of these happened when Plum Creek bought 900,000 plus acres around Moosehead Lake and then proposed the largest real estate development that we've ever seen anywhere in the state. And when I first heard about the Plum Creek proposal, I, I, I thought it had some merit. I was never against it. I mean, 100%, never. Um, I thought we should come to the table and talk and try to come to a balanced proposal. Uh, Plum Creek. Uh, this multi-billion dollar land development company has resources to pour into it that uh, no non-governmental organization can hope to match. This here is a uh, Lily Bay area. Mm, that's a and big they want development put, they want for that, yeah. isn't it? And Plum Creek wants to put about 400 houses there and a resort and a golf course and a marina. I was and continue to be leery, especially as it pertained to the development on Lily Bay, which is where we have a state park. We've invested millions of dollars in cleaning the water, protecting the resource for generations to come. They worked very diligently to be judicious about looking at both sides and coming up with a very reasonable compromise in the middle. And then here, this is the Moose Mountain Ski Area. And we don't really have a problem with some development down near the downhill ski area if they want to have condos. It's a, it's a ski area, that's fine. But the problem is that they're also trying to develop way over here on the eastern side of Moosehead Lake. This whole side is now com almost completely undeveloped. What NRCM did for us is gave us a voice. Maine is at risk of losing or seeing substantially diminished the value of one of our signature assets, one of the real Maine brand uh, areas of the state. And it's not just for people who want to go and recreate there. It's for the wood products industry. It is for the fishing camps and the guide services and the inns and the bed and breakfast, the people who make their living because the North Woods of Maine are such uh, an attraction. I think that a lot of Maine needs to be preserved, a lot of our, our woods. I mean, there's a lot of it, but if we keep just developing it, then there won't be any more. So yeah. it's important to preserve. So. I'm glad you're working on it. And you're um, for the Natural Resources Council of okay. Maine. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything like sign? Can I sign something? Or Absolutely. Something? You can sign a couple. There are a couple different things you can do okay. right now. I well, testified in Portland at the hearings about Plum Creek and Moosehead Lake. That's one of the pieces of Maine that I want to preserve because that's where I have wonderful memories. And my son, who has camped there since he was four. Uh, you know, that's what he thinks of when he thinks of life in Maine, is camping in the woods around a clean river. It's hard to remove a resort with a thousand homes. You can't go back. I wouldn't have ever thought of myself as an environmentalist, but when you get here and you live amid this, and you have guests that come and reinforce that awe and pleasure every single day, it's hard not to stand up for that. We're all humans, we all cut down trees, we all live in homes, we all drive vehicles, we all have an impact on the earth. The question is, 
how can we as humans maintain that relationship with the earth, with, with the waters, with the trees, with the animals, in such a way that uh, it doesn't impact them, that they have as much right as we do. I would rather have stood up on the side of caution and nature and natural beauty any day so that I can look back and if it's all gone someday, I'll be able to say I tried the best I can. My two children know I tried the best I could. We were just a bunch of, of, of regular people, who, who most of whom had never done anything like this before. And on the other side was a developer with an awful lot of money. And so it was nice for us to know that we had people like NRCM on our side. And I'm pretty confident that it means we'll never see a power plant proposed in Maine that is, that is fired by coal. The AES Corporation, a, a big power plant building company, energy company, wanted to build a large coal plant at Bucksport. But NRCM and STOP fought side by side over several years uh, to defend the air quality in Acadia and Mount Desert and the Down East Coast, and ultimately we were successful. NRCM over the years has worked on both sides of the aisle to reduce the level of toxic chemicals that find their way into household products and into the environment. Well, I was one of uh, 13 Mainers to be tested for toxic chemicals in my body. I had high levels of mercury, arsenic, um, phthalates, um, bisphenol A, a lot of the chemicals that we spend a lot of time talking about in the legislature. They were in me and they were in many of the other people in the study. I, I also testified um, and did a lot of adv advocacy work surrounding this bill to um, phase out the, the toxic flame retardant DECA in favor of safer alternatives. And so on the issue of DECA, Maine, um, we took on this issue. We had a huge out-of-state spending by the, um, the chemical lobby trying to defeat our bill. We passed it almost unanimously. I was so proud that we were only the second state in the country to pass this bill. I just testified on our electronic waste recycling law, which um, allows for manufacturers to pay for the collection and recycling of, of computers and television sets. We have recycled over 14 million pounds of electronic waste. That's over two and a half million pounds of lead that's been prevented from entering Maine's environment, um, mercury, uh, cadmium, a whole host of other toxic components. There's 17 other states now um, that, have, that have passed laws that are modeled after Maine's laws. Mercury, greenhouse gases, flame retardants, toxic chemical policy. I mean, what we've done in Maine has had a national impact, um, and NRCM has been a huge part of that. High energy costs certainly will return, and we need to get the legislators to understand that we have to plan now to protect our homes and businesses for the future, because high energy costs will return. That unit right there is our reclaim heat system. It takes all the excess heat off the compressors, yeah. takes and blows it back out into the store. So and so I would like to applaud uh, the Natural Resources Council of Maine, you know, Efficiency Maine, and the Maine State Chamber for working in a coordinated effort to, uh, to reach out to Maine's business community and, and educate Maine businesses on ways to attain uh, energy efficiency. It's not every day you see the NRCM and the Maine State Chamber of Commerce uh, standing together on an issue. But giving businesses of all sizes access to information and tools that can help them become more energy efficient and save them money is a simple concept that both our organizations can wholeheartedly support. Energy efficiency is the most effective investment we can make to deal with energy. Is that him right there? You heard about the Efficiency Main program where they recycle them at hardware stores? Because it would be to put in place like a program to recycle all the um, UCFL light bulbs. It is so important to find alternatives to uh, coal power and oil fire for natural yeah. gas generators. I think the Natural Resources Council has taken very thoughtful and deliberative position on wind, but they're not saying we like it in all situations, and they're trying to take it on a case-by-case -case basis, and I think that's, that's an intelligent and responsible position. We look at each site it, individually. It is so critical. I like snowboarding a lot, so I really like the snow, and uh, of course global warming affects that, so I'm pretty big on global warming. If we don't do something about our dependency on fossil fuel, from a national security point of view, 
from an economic point of view and from a global climate change point of view, we're sunk. You know what I like about these cars? They're very uh, fuel efficient. Well, if you're going to make a living selling cars in Maine, then you really have a responsibility to also try and clean up the cars you're selling. My business is important, it's how I make a living, but it shouldn't be at any cost. When 10 states in the East start a move like cleaner cars or the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, that can be a substantial prod to the federal government, so we then get national programs. The most worrisome issue for me about global warming is the sea level rise. I live on an offshore island in Maine, and my family's livelihood comes from the ocean, and we're lobstermen, so I've seen the maps of, you know, if the sea level rises this much, this is what my island will look like where I live, my town. The whole issue of global warming is inextricably linked with the long-term health and sustainability of our economy. So bringing those issues home, educating Maine people, making these issues real, and moving uh, decision makers and our elected leaders uh, toward some solutions and some creative approaches is one of the key roles that NRC in place. Maine is like an oasis because it's just so beautiful and green and wonderful here. Maine is the way life should be and we want to make sure our children and grandchildren are able to enjoy it. I think there's a role for everyone, especially citizen lobbying in the legislature, which is tremendously powerful. I hope that Maine keeps its cultural and natural integrity and that people continue to have a deep bond with the place that sustains them and the land itself. With partnerships like Natural Resources Council, there has to be a very positive outlook on the protection of our earth, protection of our mother. It's always a balance between economic development and preserving that quality of place. We still have a lot of work to do. It's just good to feel part of a human effort to make the world a better place. So now you've seen a few things that NRCM accomplished in our first 50 years. I'd like to quickly bring you up to date on what we've been doing since 2009. We have continued our work with the Penobscot Indian Nation and others to open up a thousand miles of the Penobscot River. Now endangered salmon, alewives, and other sea run fish will be able to reach their native spawning waters for the first time in 200 years. And NRCM is still working on restoring the Kennebec River too, by removing the Edwards and Fort Halifax dams, three million alewives now return annually up the Kennebec, and that's America's largest run. NRCM also worked with others for more than 10 years to successfully reopen the St. Croix River to alewives in 2013. Climate change is the greatest environmental problem of our time. Here in Maine, it threatens more flooding along the coast, more destructive storms, more asthma, ticks, and diseases like Lyme, and serious damage to our fishing industries. NRCM is the leading force in Maine for policies to address climate change. 
With our leadership, Maine was the first state to pass a law that set goals to reduce climate pollution. Climate change remains a top priority as we work for energy efficiency and cleaner sources of energy like solar and wind. NRSAM was the first organization in Maine to bring the threat of tar sands oil to the public's attention. Tar sands is the dirtiest form of oil in the world and that's bad news for our climate. In 2008, a company owned by ExxonMobil proposed to bring tar sands oil through a 60-year-old pipeline across Maine to South Portland. This could have polluted Sebago Lake, Maine's largest source of drinking water. NRCM educated the public and worked intensely with citizens in towns along the pipeline route. Six communities ultimately passed resolutions in opposition to the transportation of tar sands oil through their towns. Exxon's pipeline subsidiary also applied to build two 70-foot tall smokestacks right here in South Portland, towering next to Bug Light. They would have released toxic chemicals into the air when tar sands was loaded onto tankers. NRCM joined local residents and others to fight against that possibility. And in 2014, the South Portland City Council voted to ban such facilities. For decades, powerful interests have attempted to weaken our laws. NRCM is Maine's leading organization that successfully combats these attacks on our environment. Maine is blessed with some of the most spectacular places in America, including our legendary North Woods. Since 2011, NRCM has been working with local residents to help conserve a significant tract of land east of Baxter State Park by creating a new national park and national recreation area. The proposal has earned the support of hundreds of Maine's businesses and organizations. A national park could become a major new destination in Maine and a boost to the state and local economy. Stay tuned for more news on that effort. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you will join NRCM's 16,000 members and supporters to help protect the nature of Maine.